everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from smoky Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today, Dan, there are people out there who are a little disappointed by uh, how much Joe Biden has been trying to court uh, the religious uh, folk, the religious among us, right? To come vote for him. He's and uh, he's kind he, of ignoring us. Yeah, right? like like 20 percent of the population, a fifth of the population. Yeah, and he is just is well, he thumbing you, his nose at us? What's he doing? Let's talk about it, but not now. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to talk about <laughs> that at the end of later. the show. Later, Dan. Yeah, but before okay, uh, and before we get to to later in the show, we do need to get through. Um, slog through the first half of the show, Dan. Oh, God, it's the worst, you guys. I'm sorry. I just, sorry. <laughs> we'll, I just we'll want try the second half of the show to be here, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I've got an interesting story here, Dan, that, okay. that caught my attention. Actually, it caught my attention last week, but I passed on it because I didn't feel like I had enough time when I was mm. preparing for the show to like get into it. Sure. And so I was like, okay, I... I, I guess I'm, I'm just going to lose out on that story, right? And then I kind of looped back around to it this week, and I have to say, yeah, it, it was it was worth the wait. Okay. Uh, g- this is shocking stuff, Dan. Iran. When I say Iran, what do you think of, Dan? A what country in the Middle East. True. And, and, and what, what would you normally think their religious uh, leanings would be? Baha'i. Just kidding. Yeah, okay. I would think that their re- religious leanings are largely Muslim. Yeah, one would think, right? Yeah. Especially Iran, because, I mean, this is like, you know. Yeah. This is this is a uh, totalitarian <laughs> Muslim nation, right? Yeah, they, they the, don't like to <laughs> give people many options. Yeah, no. You, you After the, uh, rev- the Islamic Revolution uh, in 1979, Iran has been officially Muslim. Right. right, and they do not recognize other r- religious groups. Yeah, they're kind of grumpy about it. Yeah. So, whenever Iran, the government, has sort of polled the people, including in recent um, uh, censuses, they don't necessarily get a good, um, well, I guess I might say honest responses on the, the the topic of religion because right. they ask they bother asking right right but according to the to the most recent uh, Iranian census 99.5% of the population is muslim well look sure. there right right uh, and uh, however a group of researchers uh, calling themselves the group for analyzing and measuring attitudes in Iran has Not conducted all, an guys. online survey because they they realize you can't go door to door and ask people about their religious leanings right. in in this in in that country because of you know because people aren't stupid they know they're, they're not, not safe exactly they know, they know they they know the correct answer and they say it right, right. so they uh, went to great lengths to design a an online uh, survey sure that um, that they yeah, I read sort of their methodology and and how they went about it and it sounded pretty legit like they they got a huge sampling they got uh, 40,000 Iran's Iran, I'm sorry Iranians um, <laughs> 40,000 Iran's that's a lot of Iran's th- that <laughs> the, too many Iran's yeah um, the but a sample of 40,000 and they they really worked through the data to like make sure it was really clean and and uh, and weighted and balanced to really represent the, the 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 population. Sure. And they 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 feel like they they really achieved that. So when people were actually willing to honestly answer, uh, so the country is officially Shiite Muslim, right? Right. Thirty two point two percent of people claim to be Shiite Muslim. Whoa, um, that's that's low. It is really low. 
uh, if you add up all the different kinds of of uh, of ways to be Muslim, it's about forty percent uh, identify as Muslim. And Whoa. so this is really kind of shocking stuff. Uh, most Iranians, uh, apparently, about seventy eight percent of them believe in God, but only thirty seven percent believe in life after death, and only thirty percent believe in heaven and hell. Um, ninety oh. percent describe themselves as uh, coming from as having grown up in a in a believing or, or very uh, practicing religious family. Sure. Um, but forty seven percent reported losing their their religion in their lifetime. Wow. Um, One third say they occasionally drink alcohol. You cannot get alcohol. Yeah, right? I was going to say how. It, um, <laughs> like how we get drugs okay <laughs> right? like you're probably it's probably something very similar you right you know, you know who to call right and yeah. people get in trouble for it you know um but let's see um 68 percent say that religious prescriptions should be excluded from legislation huh. um 72 percent oppose the law mandating all women wear the hijab Interesting. 40, I'm sorry, 57.5% to disagree with the practice of wearing the hijab outright. 50, huh. almost, so basically 58% of the country does not believe in, in wearing a, a hijab. But they all do. All the women. Don't they? Yes, because they have to. Right. It, it's it, These things are required. These things are forced. They live legitimately in a totalitarian type type system that's crazy right? they are forced they have no choice this is not yeah. a democracy they don't have these kind of freedoms um and so you know like but we've been seeing you know i, I haven't seen any really all that recently but over the past few years there have been these moments where there'll be like a bunch of women who will like stand on a corner and take their hijab off right right and kind of hold it above them and and let people you know, see them, see, see them, see their hairs, you know, like, like, and, uh, which has got to be a terrifying moment. It's got to be terrifying, but get this, Dan, how, what percentage do you think identify as atheist? Oh man, I'll bet it's high. I'll bet it's like 20% or something. Atheist is 8.8%. .8 agnostic is 5.8 percent and then they have the nun category people same as here right right um however they're not fitting atheist and agnostic in with the nuns like they do typically here right these are sure. just people who who just they don't affiliate 22.2 percent right. interesting so i feel like i was kind of like you know, the, atheist is one thing, but I, I feel like I was pretty much You were in line. absolutely, yes, Dan, you were 100% correct. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they... No, the, that's amazing. It's amazing. And so what, what you're looking at here, and kind of the, the, the conclusions that they're drawing are that this sense of, like, what's been going on in Europe and in the West generally, as far as, like, attitudes about religion, and excluding sort of the rest of the world or sp specifically the Muslim world from these right. same things and saying that there's something different going on there, right? Yeah. They're actually saying, no, there's something maybe about modernity. There might be, some, or, or, or this time that we're living in, yeah. where people are just l considering the universe differently and they're considering their place in it differently. And they're, and they're, they're not, uh, relying on 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 past superstitions at the same rate that they had in the past and, and yeah. i think that that's fascinating and it's fascinating to think that these these places that are they're pushing religion so strongly um like the moment that you get let people um be honest like i would love to do this a similar type survey over, all over the world yeah it would be fascinating to find out and even in places like utah yeah <laughs> you know like like how much how much do the people down in in utah county really believe in mormonism yeah right? and i'd love to know that's the thing because i read 
you know, it's not enough to just read a study. Like when you, when Pew comes out with a study and they say this many people are this and this many people are that and they hear the percentages and whatever. I read the wording of those things. Mm hmm. And the wording doesn't get at what they actually, what people believe. It gets at right. what people affiliate as. Right. And belief right. is a totally different animal. Yeah. And it would be very interesting to see how many people, you know, who affiliate as Mormon, but believe, you know, but if, if, you, if you boil it down, they really don't believe it. Yeah. Or affiliate as Catholic, but if you boil it down, they believe none of it. Like, we, we need more information like this, We right? really do. Because, it, like, that's where, like... That's where things start to fall apart, I think, is, is when is when people who are just kind of going along with it realize that the majority of the people in their community are just kind of going along with it, too. Yeah. Right. That seems like that's the moment that it starts to really break and fall apart. Hopefully. Yeah, it seems it seems important. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, uh, I'm I am. Uh, the day that this recording is dropping. So if you're listening to this on Saturday, today, <laughs> today is Rosh Hashanah. Oh the, yeah. The, the Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah. Um and uh and ha happy Rosh Hashanah to any Jews who are listening. Uh here's the thing. There's a tradition in these United States of the president of the United States having kind of a a, a friendly phone call with Jewish leaders in America. Oh no! Um, <laughs> to to sort of wish them a I, Rosh Hashanah is the uh, is the traditional New Year, I think. For I, I think that's what it is, right? Anyway, it's a holiday. I have it's no a, idea. It's a very big holiday. Uh, so Donald Trump, not one. He's he loves the Jews. They're his favorite people. That's not true. Uh, but he does have a brother, a son-in-law who's one. Anyway, uh, he had this 20-minute uh, call with uh, leaders uh, in, the, in, in the American uh, Jewish community, <clears throat> which uh, he signed off with an interesting... Uh, an in First of all, he spent a, bull a, a significant amount of that 20 minutes campaigning, basically saying, you need to convince all of your people to vote for me, which... <laughs> That's not what that call is supposed to be about, and also is uh, illegal for him to be campaigning from the White House. But fuck uh, it, whatever. He, he gets to do illegal things. That's what everybody. That's just what everybody decided. has decided yeah. at this point. Uh, however, uh, yeah, he said things like, uh, "Here's a quote. I have to say this: whatever you can do in terms of November third is going to be very important because if we don't win, Israel is in big trouble." Oh my God! Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It's uh, he also claimed that the United States uh, paid Israel four point two billion in uh, in assistance, which is not true. It was actually three point eight billion, and that comes from a deal that was uh, that was brokered by Barack Obama. But fine, whatever. <laughs> the really interesting point was when he signed off on the call. Mm -hmm. With the following, oh, well. we really appreciate you. We love your country, also. <laughs> now, <laughs> I don't know if you're aware of this, Frank, <laughs> the, 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 their but American the Jews States. live in the United States of America. <laughs> They, Ooh, I mean, unless he's yeah. talking to all <laughs> dual citizens, there, uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's and some I, yeah, first class otherizing that he did right at the end of the call. <laughs> Please be sure to vote for me, you foreigners who were probably born here. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, yeah. good for him. Well, I looked up Rosh Hashanah while you were uh, talking. Uh, oh, okay. it is! It is New Year. Oh, so that you I'm were so right good. About that. But then the image search is absolutely amazing on it because it's nothing but pictures of apples, pomegranates, and honey. Oh, so yeah. There must be something going on. There is something going on. There's yeah. a whole. There's a whole thing. <laughs> you know how how the the Jewish community does with their traditions. Oh, it's nothing but it seems. No, that's all they got. Yeah. All right. They, they got a whole song about it in their uh, in their musical there. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. 
their musical. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Dan. Yeah. A uh, let's see. There's a there's an archbishop, a Catholic archbishop, uh, by the name of Jerome Listucky, up okay. in Wisconsin, and he's got a message for the people of uh, his uh, archdiocese. Okay. And he's I'm, being, I'm not going to love this, am I? He's being perfectly clear because okay. during the the last what six months of COVID nineteen, they had a special dispensation to skip mass. Oh, it was allowed, sure, you know, but that dispensation is ending. That's over. And he wants everybody to know that it is a grave sin. Quote: Grave sin to not attend mass once a week <laughs> on sunday <laughs> you must uh he says it will be the responsibilities of those who are capable and not prohibited by other circumstances to attend sunday mass those who deliberately fail to attend sunday mass commit a grave sin which, Fear which of came as, sick. as news to everybody who's ever been a catholic <laughs> He says, fear of getting sick in and of itself does not excuse someone from the <laughs> obligation. <laughs> he says, of course, like if you are sick or have pre pre-existing conditions, you can stay home. Or if you're really, really, really old. But um, I don't like it. He's not happy with that. He's The Archdiocese has been live streaming services. Um, but he says that remote viewing does not fulfill a Catholic Sunday obligation. <laughs> oh, he's poor Catholics. very, very concerned. Um, so, oh yeah, my gosh, I just... this last this last Christmas, uh, I, you'll remember that I spent in Spain, mm. and uh, on on Christmas. Eve slash day. Where will you be I, spending this Christmas, Dan? Oh, in hell. <laughs> where, where I live now. Uh, oh, so, that's I mean, not nice. <laughs> so, uh, <sighs> I was in Spain, and there, there was a midnight mass, this Catholic midnight mass, and we're there with our friends who have teen, whose two teenage daughters came with. Uh-huh. So... And they had never been outside of the U.S. They had never really spent much time outside of uh, just the just rural or southern Utah, much much smaller town Utah. Oh, really? Okay. So, you know, this was about exposing them to stuff. So we decided to pressure them into coming to midnight mass just so that they'd be exposed. Now, there's you know, going to mass is one thing. Going to mass in a different language is a totally other thing too, so there was a lot I don't involved. Think, I don't think under like understanding the language helps much. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. It really, it but, doesn't. but boy, <laughs> the one the one girl that we that we convinced to come and watch it, she she was very sweet about it, but he, he, yeah, she was she was not pleased with that moment. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. <sighs> All right, well, uh, listen. I don't know if you know this, but some companies are still making advertisements, like for television, et cetera. Really? <laughs> it seems weird. Okay. But there are still video advertisements in the world. Uh, and one of those companies <laughs> is Dole, which the, uh, the fruit company, which has been marketing. They have little individual uh, fruit cups that they call fruit bowls. They're just little individually packed. You, you know, you can take them on the go and then open them up and have have some fruit mm. and oh, they yeah. call them fruit fruit bowls oh that and sounds nice oh yeah healthy, sure. healthy snack absolutely fruit to go because the one thing about fruit is it's always been hard to like you know travel <laughs> with it it doesn't travel well you know especially like it's <laughs> like oranges it, it's not like fruit comes in its own little packaging. travel container or yeah. whatever yeah but i'm glad they've put other packaging yeah. on it because cool. yeah, the cool. peel doesn't count. It has no. to be plastic. Anyway, <laughs> so Dole's marketing their fruit bowls with a cute little campaign that is all of the... It's basically about adults who are trapped at home with kids because of COVID and whatever. Okay. Using the word fruit bowl as code for various things. One of them has a couple who have now switched their swear words to the word fruit bowl. As in... <laughs> 
what the fruit bowl are you doing? Oh, that's funny. Okay, that's cute. And then there's another one with a with a delightful older couple whose grandkids are now living with them who talk about whether or not they're going to have fruit bowls tonight sort of thing. <laughs> and oh, the kids are like, can I have a fruit bowl? Okay. <laughs> Which, it's very cute. It ends with the, the conclusion of that one is, we've been eating a lot of fruit bowls. We haven't been having a lot of fruit bowls. <laughs> anyway, it's a cute campaign. Yeah, and the third adorable. one is a lesbian couple who, uh, who are talking about oh. the kids and how they're, you know, when they want to complain about their kids, they're talking about fruit bowls. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the, uh, oh, no. this oh, no. campaign has <laughs> caught the attention of one million moms, oh, a.k.a. No. One grumpy Christian lady and her three thousand followers or whatever. It's it's pretty. I think her. I think Twitter. She has under fewer than five thousand followers on Twitter. So uh, not quite a million, but pretty close. Right. I think five thousand. Five thousand is pretty close to a million, right? I if mean, you round, if yeah. you round up, yeah. And keep anyway, rounding uh, and keep rounding. Right. Uh, the uh, this the one million moms uh, has decided to have some outrage about these this campaign <laughs> saying quote the insinuations and tone in these ads are offensive because of what is represented and the fact that children actually appear in the commercials is also disturbing oh <laughs> in spite of the fact that the whole point of it is that we're using code words that kids can't understand right like that's the whole joke uh but Apparently, <laughs> one million couple, Christian moms. A couple adults who've just decided all on their own to have to call sex fruit ball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the kids the kids caught on real, real quick. No, the kids oh my god. It's so funny. Yeah. They they called it irresponsible and tasteless. It is extremely <laughs> destructive and uh. damaging to impressionable children viewing the commercial. <laughs> Good oh. lord. How uptight do you have to be for you to be freaked out about fruit bowl? That's it's pretty it's pretty uh pretty amazing. Dole for their part has come out and said uh that they stand by their campaign. Yes, so. of course. Good on them. Yeah. They stood up so to there the you million go. The, the the million moms. All one, of the moms. One million moms. <laughs> Are, are being shunned by a fruit company. That's very sad. Believable. <laughs> All right. Well, Dan. Yeah. So I've got some news about a a large Protestant group in the United States. I don't like it. One of the largest. Let's not do it. In fact, Let's, I don't. I don't want to hear about it. Let's who, not do it. Who are acknowledging? <laughs> Uh, it, 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 their historic role in the support of slavery. Oh. Um, and, uh, and that's the Southern Baptist Convention. And are they, they are they acknowledging it in a way that's like they're proud of it, or are they acknowledging no. it in a way that they're <laughs> no? The, so they're, what they're doing is they are dropping, um, or at least more and more of the leadership of the Southern Baptist Convention, which is still officially called the Southern Baptist Convention, but more okay. and more are increasingly dropping Southern when talking about themselves as Baptists. Oh. Um, because Interesting. of, and they are acknowledging the fact that that may be a, a, a painful reminder for a lot of people about the 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 convention's role in the support of, of slavery historically. Interesting. Um, and so there's about 50,000 Baptist churches in the in the convention, but they're they're very sort of loosely affiliated. It's not like right. Not like what we grew up in, right? No. But, so there's like no real sin they they have a they have a they have like a convention every year and they they have like sort of a set of beliefs and values and this and that and sort of a, a similar theology or they have the same theology, I guess you would say, but they, right. but their their each congregation is independent, and so the current president, by the, he's a guy by the name of J.D. Griar, right. Griar, 
Um, he says that there's a lot of momentum that's been building and they're going, they're sort of leaning toward the name great commission Baptists. Oh, I, it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, <laughs> no. but, um, they, they, they're, they're doing this and, and the, the momentum is building in large part because of the racial, um, um, issues that are coming up in the nation. Right. Yeah. And this, the, the, the. And, and, but, but also in addition to that, many Southern Baptists have long seen, um, the Southern part of the, the name as, or, or just the, the idea of being Southern Baptist as being too regional. Right. Right. Um, and I guess they, they view themselves as, as a global group of believers is how this article phrases it. Um, and, uh, and so they, they think that just having something that's a little bit more accessible and that isn't so regional, right? It sounds better. Interesting. But get this, Dan. Oh, this is uh-oh. from Griar. This is his his line about okay. this whole thing. He says, "You're making me nervous." He says, "Our Lord Jesus was not a white Southerner, but oh. but a brown skinned Middle Eastern refugee." Whoa! What? <laughs> Every he admitted week... that out loud. Yes. Um, every week we gather to worship a savior who died for the whole world. Not one part of it. What we call ourselves should make that clear. Um, he's wow. also, um, he's announced that he's going to retire a historic gavel, um, that was named for a, a slave owner. It's <laughs> okay. the so-and-so, so-and-so gavel, I guess. And so-and-so, so-and-so was a slave owner. And so oh my gosh. they, um, he's he's retiring it goodbye gavel so i don't know what he's going to be striking now when he's calling order yeah. but um but yeah there will like, be no order <laughs> there will be no order <laughs> but yeah so it's like it's like kind of turning into um this thing none of the the, the article multiple of the quotes throughout the article were all people sort of acknowledging well you know it is kind of expensive to rename yourself <laughs> <laughs> Um, which yeah, is kind of the, funny. the financial like, questions are the top ones. Yeah, absolutely. But they are saying that they they like sort of like um, the this what what did I say it was called the something con- Great Commission Baptists. The Ugh. people are liking it, and some of the churches okay. might actually change some signage or whatever. Um, but that's kind of beside the point. They're just sort of re-identifying themselves. And All not right. really officially yet, but like, it's this building thing. I mean, look, I've seen some stuff on Facebook where people are like, Jesus was white and blah, blah, blah. So he, they're pissing some people off with this stuff. Yeah. Just him saying that about yeah. Jesus was a brown skinned Middle Eastern refugee. Holy crap. Yeah. Like, that's huge. Yeah. Like, I don't even know what to think of the Southern Baptist now because like, I mean, they're absolutely <laughs> right because the fact of the matter is. If, when, when you said Southern Baptist to me, I was like, bunch of racists. Bunch of fucking racists. I thought that was their whole thing. I thought it was too, I thought but that apparently was the basis it's not. of their theology. I know, but apparently it's not. All right. So you learn well, something. Well, we'll see. I we'll learned see. something. This is crazy. I think it Dan. still is. I, I don't buy it. I think it's still, <laughs> they're still racist. All right. Well, I'm going to bring it all home oh, now. Oh, good. And tell our listeners the story of one Steve Urquhart, uh, who... Spell Urquhart for everybody. uh, (laughs) U-R-Q-U-H-A-R-T. Boy, it's a mess of a name. (laughs) That's probably like a German thing or something. I don't know. Anyway, old Steve, uh, he he was a... He spent 10 years uh, in the Utah State Legislature. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in the Utah House uh, for a while and then became a Utah State Senator. Um, and in that time was a uh, was known as a very sort of down the line, very conservative Republican yeah. uh, lawmaker. Yeah. A champion of school vouchers, mm. um, voted against uh, a, a hate crime bill. Uh, at one point okay so like kind of your your standard mormon uh republican dickhead (laughs) 
<laughs> and then things got a little bit weird. He started to change some of his opinions. He became, uh, for instance, he he be, he became for. Uh, so he sort of started fighting for LGBTQ rights. Yeah, that's and yeah. Uh, and you know sponsored the uh, the state's anti discrimination law mm -hmm. and also was like a, a proponent of the legalization of mar medical marijuana hmm. and stuff. So so like he started to get a little little a little squishy around the corners uh, in terms of his conservative bona fides. <laughs> well. He left the state legislature in 2016, mm -hmm. and in that, in the in the intervening four years between then and now, he's apparently had some some other changes of heart, uh, oh. because he has just announced that he will be starting his own religion <laughs> based on and entire and entirely consumed with the idea of the consumption of. Magic mushrooms as a spiritual conduit <laughs> to the divine. <laughs> oh my goodness. What happened to Steve Urquhart? <laughs> he apparently had <laughs> a life altering experience trying a uh, an ayahuasca ceremony in Amsterdam. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> And uh, and learned all about psychotropic drugs. And let me tell you something. He's on board. <laughs> Literally, he's calling this, his his new church the Divine Assembly. Oh my! And uh, it is it is centered on psilocybin, which is the drug in yeah. in, in mushrooms. Yeah. And he's thought about it too, man. He's he, and you know he's a lawmaker, so he he's gone through uh, the process of figuring out how to do this. So he his church will not supply the mushrooms. Oh, okay. But they do hope to provide cover for those who want to use them uh, as a as as a sacrament of a church. Wow. So oh I, my god. I, I don't know what the the legal ramifications will be. Obviously, magic mushrooms are not legal in no, this no, state, no, uh, or in this country, which is why you and I have never done them. <laughs> never. Uh, and uh, so we'll see. We'll see. I mean, there is precedent for uh, the use of controlled substances in a religion. Uh, there are Native American religions that yeah. are allowed to use peyote, for example. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, wow. That I, is a, that, that's oh. a hell of a turnaround there, Steve. Oh, boy. Somebody needs to make a movie. Like, yeah. about, like <laughs> wow. The, this yeah. guy. Because I yeah. remember back when he was, like, starting to, like, um, be this kind of interesting ally to the gay community, yeah. right? And I, was, I remember just being like, huh, well, cool. This guy is, like. You know, he's had some change in his life and he's yeah. and he's willing to stand up for what he believes is right. Right. Yeah, like, maybe he had a nephew that was gay yeah, or something. Some, is what something I always happened, thought. somebody got to him somehow and reasoned and he listened. Like some something happened, right? right. And he befriended somebody or somebody befriended him. Like whatever it right. was, right? Like and it's just like wow. This guy has had he's had a ride. Yeah. He's had a wild ride. <laughs> I, I believe the word you're looking for is trip. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So there you go. Uh try apparently try mushrooms, you guys. It'll uh, <laughs> it'll bring you to God. I mean, well, it's an amazing experience. Or can be, you know. Yeah, one which you and I have never tried, of course. Never. But but you know but it can and certainly be. not but it can together be. that one time that was really cool. No, that no, never, never, Dan. Yeah. Well, kids, uh, if you have uh, never, also never tried mushrooms and would like to tell us about it, you can write into us podcast at thankgodimatheist.com or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424 666 8442. Stick around, guys. There's more show coming up. Hey Dan, yeah. Um, here's what I want. I want you to play an 
an audio clip for me that's going to freak me out even more about like where this country is going. I will, and... but I have to do it after I load my gun. Hang on. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm in the middle of something. I've got, I've, I've got three more magazines to load and then I'll play the clip. Oh, fine. I'll just play the clip now. Um, but everybody, uh, just try, try not to get too frightened by this, but maybe get a little frightened. This is Rick Joyner, uh, epic dickhead Rick Joyner talking to you about what's coming. We're in time for war. We need to recognize that. We need to mobilize. We need to get ready. Uh, I'm talking to law enforcement, talking to people. Uh, one of the things I saw in a dream I had related to our Civil War was that militias would pop up like mushrooms. And it was God. These were good militias. We need to recognize the times, need to be prepared for them. If God's people don't become a part of the militia movements, uh, the good militia, the bad people will take them over. And we have so often abdicated territory to the enemy because we didn't want to get into something. Well, Jesus himself said, there's going to be a time when you need to sell your coat and buy a sword. Now, that was a physical weapon of their day. And we're in that time here. We need to realize that. What I also saw in my dream was the Lord had seeded our country with veterans from the Iraq War, Afghanistan, all these wars we've been in recently. Many who know how to fight in urban warfare are going to be a part of the leadership of these militias and help us in what's about to unfold in our own country. And these are going to be patriots. These are going to be those who are going to, they know what the tyranny of Marxism is, and they've seen its evidence and the cruelty of some other ideologies and all that is out there. And no, but they are going to be able to help give leadership to these militias that are popping up. And this was a God thing. He prepared us for this. Oh, God. Well, yikes. <laughs> Here's the thing about you know, the big takeaway for that <laughs> of that for me is that uh, it's not for, for someone like Rick Joyner. There's not a question of, uh oh, what if this devolves into yeah. into a civil war? No, he... it's what are we going to do when this inevitably devolves into a civil war, which we want to have happen and are waiting to happen. Yeah, it's it's scary. It's really scary because, like, you know, like, I mean, what do you what? What's going to happen, right? As like, if if these people get more agitated than they already are, right? Yeah. And you have groups that are out there, you know, protesting. Um hopefully all peacefully right but yeah. then some but you know er, sometimes a riot you know has they happen right like it just takes one one and, idiot and to throw something yeah. and then every, somebody else and, and then, just then it's, piles it's just on, on and whatnot like and, and i don't want and i'm not being like oh you know riots happen right it's not that it's like <laughs> there have been riots right yeah. i'm speaking more about like there have been and there probably will be some more right and totally. like you have the wrong group, the wrong Christian militia over here, right? With something that happens over here and what ends up happening, like how bad can it get? Because it's already been pretty bad, right? Yeah. Um, and, but, but when like, when it's just like a foregone conclusion that there's going to be a civil war and we've been watching people say these kind of things for years now. Right, like, yeah. like, and on this show, we've been playing these clips for you know probably as long as the show's been <laughs> going, right? But but they are becoming more frequent in, yeah. in these past few years. Just this idea that it's like it's just going to be all out war, and it's really, really, really fucking scary. Yeah, like I, 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 I don't want to scare anybody out there, but like. Like this is alarming. It is alarming. The uh, the, the yeah, there's 
there are preparations being made, whether those preparations come to fruition or not. And, and it's, it's not us that's doing it. <laughs> We're not prepping. Well, should we, though? Uh, what? Should we? You know, I, don't I mean, know. they can buy AR-15s. Why can't we? We can. <laughs> I just don't want to encourage it. <clears throat> just seems like it seems like the wrong way to, to handle this. <laughs> We should be we should be uh, not fanning the flames, right? Yeah, I don't know. Oh <laughs> boy! Well, okay. We had some folks write into us. Uh, Candy wrote into us. You, you remember Frank? We talked last week about uh, some some planners that had been donated to a school uh, that they had to cut the the last bit out yeah. because it had it had some Jesus shit on it. Anyway, Candy wrote in to say. I straight up cackled when you guys brought up paper planners being only for the very young. (laughs) Spoilers, there's a massive market of middle-aged and older women who have the disposable income for these things, (laughs) including various sticker books that can cost $20 a pop. Sticker books? Yeah. Like scratch? The drama is endless. Collecting stickers? No, no. Uh, I'll I'll, I'll let the email sort of explain. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, The drama is endless, but of most relevance is the fact that every year women bemoan the fact that Christianity features so heavily in planners in the form of pre-printed holidays and planner accessories, like having full sticker books dedicated to Christmas and Christmas-themed stickers. So apparently they're, uh, you know, you get a little, you get the Christmas tree and you want to put it down for, you know, when when it's Martha's... (laughs) Christmas party or whatever. So wait, is this like crafting, but it's, it's, yeah, it's like, yeah, I get the sense that this is, this is, this is the planner version of crafting. Or if you need to plan your crafting, (laughs) how are you going to plan your crafting if you're not stickering? So on Mondays I do quilting and on Tuesdays I do toll painting. I've got scrapbooking on (laughs) scrapbooking. (laughs) So anyway, uh, Candy goes on. Um, Let's see. Uh, Yes. Uh, Entire sticker books dedicated to Christmas and Christmas-themed stickers, but maybe only a single page of Hanukkah Mm. in a generic, quote, winter festivities sticker book. The white Christian majority often doesn't understand the complaints, even though they they complained the loudest when one major company, the Happy Planner brand, realized, uh, or, or sorry, released a special collection based around non-white girl stickers just last year. The Wrong Wrong Collection, spelled R-O-N-G-R-O-N-G, uh, which sounds wrong wrong to me, but oh well. Um, I don't know what that means. Anyway, oh no, these white women were faced with a collection where, unlike every other time, they were not the main represented group. <laughs> uh, don't give the brand too much kudos, though. Their company, Instagram, deci- decided th- that, quote, all lives matter, and the company has remained long silent on the blatant racism in their customer base revealed by the Wrong Wrong Collection. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this is a whole yeah, it, subculture I know nothing about. Never there's a, heard there's a world out there <laughs> that we don't know anything about. It's uh, it's a little freaky. <sighs> well, uh, we also have a a voicemail uh, from do. Garrett. Yes, uh, who who uh, has some things to say. So let's hear what Garrett has to say. Hey, Frank and Dan, this is Garrett from Houston. I was listening to an older episode of yours, or a relatively recent episode of yours where you were talking about how activist atheism has really kind of gone on the back burner recently with the rise of all of the political issues that we're having today. Um, I, that really struck a chord with me and that was very relatable. And I just wanted to say, I totally understand. Um, when I started listening to you guys, um, I actually had the opportunity, I don't remember when this was, but I had the opportunity to meet you guys when you had come to Houston, what feels like forever ago. And around that time, I had found your show and I was listening for a while, um, but also I was listening to like the atheist experience and I was listening to a lot of other uh, more like philosophical atheist uh, 
you know, debates and, and things like that, really getting a hold on kind of like where I fell on, uh, the atheist spectrum, I suppose, um, and getting familiar with like logical arguments and reasoning and, and a lot of stuff like that. And I was really strong and really into it. And I was, I was consuming so much, um, anti-theist, um, anti-religious stuff because it was so strong. It was such like a important thing in my life at the time. And it really fell away. And I don't, I don't know how long I was really into that, but it really did fall away. And I became just a pretty like normal dude after that. And I, I fell more into, uh, you know, more like standard traditional politics and stuff and, and really consuming a lot of news and things like that. Um, so when you guys said that, that the atheist thing has, uh, or the importance of atheism in our, I guess, lives, uh, has fallen away a little bit that really, like I said, it really struck a chord with me. And I wanted to ask you guys why you think that is, do you think that it's, um, atheism and the separation of church and state and things like that is still very important? Or do you think things have, you know, fallen in our favor a little bit over the years. Um, what's your take on that? Thanks. Well, thanks, Garrett. Yeah. Uh, th- that's a really interesting question. Yeah. Well, I, here's, I, I don't, do you remember how long ago this conversation we had was? No. I, I don't specifically remember uh, or exactly what he's talking about, but I, I get the sentiment of, I literally forget what we said <laughs> the moment after we stopped recording. <laughs> I have no oh, idea when we said it anything. Um, but here's the deal. Like, I, I think that I probably did kind of feel, you know, that way at one point. And I think that, like, mm. there is, like, this thing where, like, the movement, the, uh, uh, the sort of the atheist movement, or at least sort of the expansion of, like, non-belief in this country is going forward at such an incredible rate, right? That yeah. um, I think that, the the urgency to be like really active um maybe has fallen away for a lot of us maybe right mm. um because it just feels like almost like a foregone conclusion that we're just going to continue to grow and and whatnot um however i would say that with <laughs> the current political landscape of this country there's a lot to be really concerned about as yeah. radically conservative christians um are being uh, you know, appointed to judicial, um, you know, to, to the bench throughout, throughout right. the federal to government. lifetime appointments. Yeah. And it's just like, it's, it's really fucking scary and quite awful because here they are, they're going to have all of the, these seriously like rabid conservatives. Um, and they're going to be making decisions, um, on these cases that are coming before them for, for a long, 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 long time. The only thing, right. you know, it is three branches of government. And so like, if things really do shift, you know, hopefully the two other branches are outweighing the judiciary as much as possible. Yeah. But you know, we know that that's not always really how it works. Um, it's not yeah, it's... like, but, but Garrett, yeah, I, I hear you. Like, there, I think there's a, a, a maturing that we all do, right? Or maybe it's not maturing, but there's an evolution that happens, right? As we kind of come out and recognize how we feel about, you know, religion or, you know, we just accept our own atheism or whatever it is, there's a fervor, right? Like, especially if you yeah. came from something oh, yeah. conservative, you feel like you've been lied to your whole life and you want to tear down the whole thing and you want to learn every nasty thing about religion you can and then like then maybe you get into more like well let yeah oh, yeah i need to learn how to like you know reason and think and you know on my own yeah, because you weren't taught that yeah. when you were you know and then and then you hit this point where you're just like well i i'm just a human being and i want to just, just live, gotta live my, my life. life yeah exactly yeah and so so yeah that's that sounds like a, a great path that you've been on and and uh but yeah, what do you think, Dan? I don't know, man. I, I think right now, I think it's an important. Uh, I I still think that like, the whole you know our our people are still not treated well by society yeah. currently. Uh, most societies in the world actually, right? And that's a problem. 
But right now, it feels like there are more immediate fish to fry. <laughs> like, yeah. the era of Donald Trump has revealed, like, yeah. you know, I, I'll put us on a back burner so that the Black Lives Matter thing can step forward a little bit yeah. more, you know? Because yeah. we can always fly under the radar. An atheist can always sort of just yeah. not tell people, and it's fine. And that's so, shitty. It's shitty. It sucks. Right. To be surrounded but by like, believers and not be able to, like be yourself but yeah i hear what right. you're saying as far as like your safety and yeah you know, maybe your job yeah. or whatever but yeah you're but, right but the, you know i feel like i feel like the time is coming when we're going to have to start demanding some stuff i agree i feel like I agree. the the uh our our numbers are big enough and and our uh and the the infractions are egregious enough that we are going to have to start demanding some some respect pretty quick here. absolutely all right we'll see all right uh i'm not sure if that answers the question or not anyway we have some folks to thank uh i'm gonna start us off oh, great. we have a few a few people uh who, who gave us one-time donations so thanks so much to douglas for your one-time donation and uh and andrew bought us a cup of coffee thank you so much andrew That's fantastic thank you um and then dan over on patreon yeah. uh, sure <laughs> we have four new uh patrons this week wonderful there's a new teacher, Dan, by the name of okay. Stacy. Stacy, thank you. Welcome to the priesthood. Welcome. Well done. Yes. Uh, and then get this, Dan. Not one, not two, but three new patriarchs. What? Three patriarchs, Dan? Oh my God! The, the, <laughs> they've they've been given the power of prognostication. Yeah, amazing. They're fucking wizards yeah we, we got some wizards up in the house <laughs> so we have revan scott and daniel uh who are new pay the three patriarchs man oh my god amazing um send us a, and they're blessing us they're blessing we're getting patriarchal blessings from all three of them <laughs> so thanks guys and amazing. as always we have our top donor to thank our lord and savior davis well, hey, uh, thank you guys so much. You are amazing. You're the gas in our engine, the wind beneath our wings. If any of you want to join these fine, fine people in their quest to keep this engine running, please go to thankgodimatheist.com, click on the Support Me tab, and, uh, and you'll be one of the best people in the world, too. Hey Dan. Yes. There is a um maybe you've heard an election going on this year for, for student president body president of the United States. No, Dan. Oh, oh, president, Dan, of, the, the president. of the United States. That sounds important. <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> um especially because we've got to get Ding Dong out of the office. Oh my god. Um, you guys anyway. we have to get him out. Do he whatever you to. can. He has to. But I was thinking, um, because I saw a headline today, and it was something about, like, um, you know, Biden, both Biden and Trump shun nuns, right? Oh, in, like in, N-O-N-E-S. In, not, N-O-N-E-S, not right? Not little old ladies in habits, but No, nah, I mean, it's us. It's given. It's a given that Trump's going to shun actual nuns. Right. Um, yeah. I'd be shocked if Biden did. But nonetheless, and it was kind of this outrage piece uh about like why atheists and agnostics like should feel a little snubbed by biden right sure and i'm just like well do i feel snubbed that he's <laughs> like he's like trying desperately like he's got my vote right and yeah. he's probably got most atheist votes like and i'm i i honestly was just kind of like i feel like giving him a pass but what do you think like should we be like, is it just oh, so man. easy as that? Like, we, I mean, because like, like the, the, the voicemail that we just heard you yeah. know, before, before the break from, from Garrett, from Garrett. Um, and like we were saying, like there seems, there does seem to be bigger fish to fry, but what about our movement? Right? Like when do we, and when are we going to exert ourselves politically 
so that we do secure those things that are priorities for us, like yeah. separation of church and state, like yeah. saying, fuck, no, no prayer in schools ever. Yeah. It's yeah. done. Right. Um, when, when do we, when do we get around to this? I, it's a valid question. And here's the thing with a lot of guys, look, I think the goal here has to be to win no matter what it has yeah. to be to get Donald Trump out of the white house, come hell or high water. Yeah. And it's true that we, while atheists aren't a block, uh, it, there, we're pretty reliable in, right. in, uh, in, in, as you know, as, as, a, democratic as a democratic politics. vote. Yeah. Um, there are plenty of, of, conservative atheists and boy sure. do they get mad online when we when we assume that that they're not going to be but yeah <laughs> i gotta say uh biden's a particularly tricky one considering he has a track a pretty bad track record of saying out loud that people are sort of locked into voting for him mm. even like you know he had that that gaffe about you know he was talking about latino voters and he's like you know, they don't vote as a block the way the blacks do. Of course, they all have to vote for me, but but the Latinos, thats I can't just count on that. So <laughs> it is a bit of an issue. You know what I mean? It like it like He shouldn't be taking us for granted. He should no. be talking about our issues. Right. We, you know, we said it earlier. We're like, you know, a fifth of the population. Well, why, do, why does it have to be mutually exclusive? Like, can't you go for a religious vote and also acknowledge that like there can be balance in our society and that well, that's, atheists that's have a space here too like why can't the message be more ecumenical right well it's yeah it's so funny because what we're asking for is not serve us right it's not favor us right it's just hey we're here also mm -hmm. please don't forget that yeah so, yeah, you'd think that you could sell everybody's okay. Like, <laughs> like not favoring the Christians for everything. You'd think that that would be, you'd, you'd be able to sell that story right. to a voting populace. Yeah, I, I, I think it is still, though, in large part because we have, because there hasn't been sort of an atheist political movement that's coalesced right right like that is that just hasn't happened and it's and it i don't know how it's going to happen it's probably going to be one of those things where it's like as when it does happen it's like oh oh that oh that makes sense why didn't we think of that sooner you know right but like but like as soon as we can like convince politicians that we're here and that we matter right yeah like like, they'll have to they'll have to start acknowledging us in in their campaigning the, the obviously with biden like the the we're not there yet the the movement hasn't made that that point yet we haven't right. convincingly gotten national politics to uh to 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 it even really just acknowledge us apparently in the in the democratic uh, platform there is some few nods to like yeah. the non-believers and whatnot but it's right. buried in the platform right like who's actually who, who's actually campaigning that way who's actually acknowledging us and that we are a vote and that you know maybe you would excite a lot of people to show up right like yeah. right now we feel this obligation and a terrifying need to 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 vote against trump right but what about what if we were excited you know yeah you know it's so funny i think about I, when, you know how you would package it and it seems like a fairly easy sell right you can just go to the founding documents mm -hmm. and point at it and say look mm. let's revitalize the thought that this country is for everybody mm -hmm. that uh, you know that we're supposed to be serving everyone equally and giving everyone, uh, you know, sort of an equal shot and that government shouldn't be involved in your in your religion because that's your business. Like all of this is easily marketable. Yeah. 
But then there's this problem, and that is that you know it's 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 the saying that I've said before. I you know I didn't make it up certainly, but I the idea that uh, loss of privilege feels like oppression, right? Mm -hmm. And these Christians, I mean. They love their oppression. It is their favorite <laughs> thing in the universe to feel oppressed. But they, but anything that we've ever done as a as an as a group, as a, you know, we're not a monolith. We're right. not the we're not all the same thing. But everything that you know, major atheist organizations have done, all it served to do is give them that oppression narrative. They're right. trying to get, kill us. They're out to get us. They're going to ruin Christmas on purpose. They're trying <laughs> to kill the babies. They, you know, they're getting pregnant just to have abortions. They're just right. And and so what we're going to have to do is find a way past the I I think past the butting heads narrative, past mm -hmm. the us poking them angrily. You know, like because you know. A while back, they haven't been doing it lately, but a while back, a American atheists were running billboards everywhere that were like, basically, the, the sentiment was, fuck you and have a terrible Christmas because you believe in God. You know what I mean? It was just like, <laughs> hey. No. Really? I mean, okay, that's so a paraphrase. We, I'm pretty I sure that's a paraphrase. So. I hope so. But if, even if that's the sentiment, <laughs> holy crap. Um, but but um, no, it almost feels like... It feels like we have to grow up a little bit. Yeah. We got to get past the anger because anger doesn't draw anybody in, right? No. Anger is only going to alienate people. Well, right? it, it, it feeds their fire. And, Exa yeah, exactly. And as long as, as long as they're e we are easily painted as enemy uh -huh. and, and as people who, who are hate filled, yeah. who just, who want to destroy America instead of want to uh, make it better. It's it's just going to be too easy for they're going to be in the majority, right? For the foreseeable future, right? So what we have, so I mean, the appeal should be something along the lines of a you're oppressing us, not the other way around, right? And b we want you to be able to practice your thing. We're not taking anything away from you. Exactly. Go for it. Enjoy right. it. We're right. we're on Merry board. Merry Christmas. Merry fucking Christmas. Yeah. Now stop making us pray in school. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Because believe me, you told me a thousand times that you're Christian. I know. But if yeah. I don't know, it's happy holidays. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. No, like, so, but, but seriously, I, I, I honestly think that like, if, if we view it in sort of those, I, I didn't even think that the, the voicemail that we played and, and this were, I mean, I saw some like common themes and whatnot, but like, this, this idea of needing to mature as a community. And that just means more people who've gone through the process of being pissed off and being angry and now just being like, oh, but all I really care about is a, living in a secular society, right? right. Like, like if we can all land and just agree on that, that that's our big message, right? Secularism, secularism, sec get prayers out of public meetings, out of the schools, you know, right. and, and, and somehow shift the culture, especially I, I would love it if the Democrats would finally just stop maybe, you know, opening the convention with a prayer. Right. Right. And did all that stuff and all the, you know, God bless the USA stuff as right. like the last thing they say, like if you feel like that needs to be part of the message because there are believers in the midst, you can talk about your faith. If you are a person of faith, I don't right. have any problem with that. Right. But don't talk do it as a it means as a of thing. like pandering to the religious people who you, you're, you're, whose vote you're trying to get. Right. Right. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the key <clears throat> is just, uh, I mean, part of it is just messaging from us. We are not messaging very well yet. Mm -hmm. We haven't learned that lesson. And, 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 you know, let them understand that what we want isn't change everything to fit us. We just want change everything to include us or to not exclude us. Yeah. yeah. And that's a totally different ask. Mm-hmm. 
I don't think I don't I don't think we've made that clear as a group at all. Right. But I mean, if history, you know, uh will teach us anything, like just wanting to be at the table <laughs> it's not right. a hard at or it's 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 not a hard thing to ask for, but for whatever reason it is an incredibly hard thing for the people already at the table right. to make that space for you. Yeah. And that goes and- for race, gender uh, sexual orientation, like, yeah. like whatever the identity is in this country, if you were not already at the table, what the fuck? Why is it so fucking hard to just let people have a space? And we're yeah, going to, we're, we're going to see that except for the fact that the thing that I do believe about the, the, the non-belief movement or the non-religious movement to be, just be more broad about the whole thing is that it's growing so much quicker than anybody thought it was going to. Yeah, that's true. Right. It, it does. Yeah. If nothing else, the fact that we're not being sort of not pandered to, but at least acknowledged uh, more often and, and more stridently. Yeah. Uh, it just, it just, bes- it taught it's, it's a lack of foresight yeah on on anybody's part because guess who you're going to be talking to real quick yeah guess guess who you're going to be pandering to real soon yeah so get on our good side now (laughs) that's the goal i want to be pandered to yeah pander baby (laughs) (laughs) all right pander away well, yeah. uh, if you f- have a good idea for how to get us all pandered to a little bit more, <laughs> please feel free to write into us. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com is the email address. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424 666 8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. Click the like button. You'll love it. And while you're there, search for the TGIA members only lounge and request to join is a closed group. We will let you in. Also find us on Twitter at TGI Atheist. And guys, if you like what you hear, and we know you do, right? (laughs) Otherwise, why are you still listening? (laughs) Please help us continue making the show. You can do so by going to our website, thankgodimatheist.com, and becoming a member of the show on Patreon or, or, or over at PayPal. Yeah, we'll we'll give you the priesthood for Christ's sake. Yeah. Isn't that worth something? <laughs> anyway, uh, hey, thanks so much to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their fine music. And a big thanks to Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>